This isn't an interview, me to me. I'm going to use some different voices in this, so don't be alarmed when that happens. Because it'll probably be weird. My name is Rick Nash. And as I'm saying this, I am just recently turned 31. It was a very special birthday to me, because it's one I didn't expect to necessarily have. When I was in the summer of my 7th grade year, I was diagnosed with hepatitis C. One of the key elements I took from that doctor's appointment was that I would need to have a transplant around 30 or die. And given the knowledge that he had, and the virility of my, to be later understood as, variant strain, a transplant would only extend my life a short period of time. It was a prediction that I have fought against my entire life. Two months ago, I received a liver transplant, and presently am on treatment for HCV, or hepatitis C. My viral load fell from 100 million to 33,000 at present, and following four days of treatment. I'm not yet out of the woods, but I'm better off than he predicted, because he also believed that my state would be far more impacted by the virus. I stay healthy otherwise, and a life of keeping myself that way has helped me survive, but by no means could I be here talking to you right now without the support of others near and far. So, this isn't an interview. It's just a format to help isolate certain issues. Uh, so, what are we talking about? Presently, we're in dire straits politically, and many don't understand just what the stakes are. I'm talking about the ACA, also known as Obamacare. First off, I want you to know that I'm biased. After all, without the ACA, I wouldn't be here. To make this more complicated, I'm going to state now that, well, I'm a registered Republican. Always have been. In fact, I come from a line of Republicans. My family has been that way, or has been here since Coolidge, and I take pride in it. So, we're, essentially, we're talking about how the ACA, also known as Obamacare, has saved my life. You've had a pre-existing condition your whole life. One that insurance companies actively deny actively prefer to deny treatment for. How has this impacted your life? I've been aware of healthcare policies and health insurance since high school. I learned how to understand benefits from my mom, who has worked in HR for as long as I've been alive. My senior year in college, I began, to, I began looking for, for a job that would give me the benefits I needed. I focused more on benefits packages than I did on compensation, because of the high costs I would have to pay otherwise. My first treatment failed in 2008, and it showed me the price that it would cost me to lose insurance. That treatment would, would have cost me over $60,000, even having failed it and stopped halfway through. I graduated in 2008, and like many others at the start of the recession, finding any decent paying job was a challenge. When I graduated, I realized that I would need to stay in school full-time until I could get a job so as not to lose health insurance. Well, I should say full-time job is really more correct, but those are a little bit harder for some reason. So I enrolled in classes and worked 25 to 39 hours a week. When I found an available promotion, I seized it. I took a chance and began a second treatment, and while I was working 39 hours a week and making a living wage, in order to have benefits, I went to school full-time. I was lucky in that four months before I turned 25, my parents' insurance plans had a policy that allowed students under 25 to be on their parents' plan. And so I was lucky in that four months before I turned 25, I managed to find a job without or with benefits. That next year, in 2011, I started planning on different treatments, and I found one. With a solid job, I could try the one that would eventually cure my mom. But a week before an esophageal bleeding episode would send me into the hospital, I was pink-slipped. To make this more confusing, it would be recalled and sent again twice. An esophageal bleeding episode is essentially a bleed in your esophagus. Usually... It comes from a bursting vein and causes a lot of internal bleeding and can quickly cause death if not treated quickly. 
After receiving a MELD score of 14, I began to look for a new job. Thankfully, my friends knew of an opening, and I started later that year. There was one problem. The company used a temp service to hire its own employees, allowing them to bypass benefits. Using a temp agency like this is common, and lives in a legal gray zone. The temp agency can't exclusively cater to one company, or be owned by that company. Thankfully, the ACA stepped in twofold. It extended my coverage until 26, and my pre-existing condition was no longer a coverage concern. That being said, the ACA was still new and very shaky, and insurance companies can, re can retroactively deny coverage. So I prepared myself for a potential situation wherein the ACA is repealed and my insurance retroactively kicks me off of it, using my pre-existing condition as a reason. What this meant for me is that I would need to use COBRA to extend coverage until I would start my new insurance in April. So for two months, I would see $900 a month fade into nothing to ensure my insurance would still carry me. What would have happened without the ACA? Without the ACA, I would presently still be in debt from a six-month coverage gap. Because as I would begin my new job, my left femur was injured in a car accident. While her insurance covered the losses, it would be reimbursed months later after the collision. I would not have been able to cover my medical bills or any other incidentals. My hepatitis C treatment without insurance was over $100,000, and the medical care otherwise meant that I hit max out of pocket on a yearly basis, meaning that I would have no choice but to accumulate unpayable amounts of debt with the hope that bankruptcy could possibly save me. And this would limit my housing options, my ability to cover future medical costs, and any potential use of my degree. <laughs> Essentially, it was a recipe for homelessness. But thankfully, the ACA does exist, so that didn't happen. There are two parts, th those are two parts of the ACA slash Obamacare legislation that were vital in your life. How else has it affected you? After the third treatment failed at the end of 2012, my symptoms began to worsen. Ascites, an extreme form of water retention, became an issue of vigilance. While I was prescribed a solution in the form of diuretics, I would only take them occasionally, because if I took them regularly, my electrolyte imbalance was such that my legs would randomly spasm out of control for hours. I would find a method that would keep me moving and alleviate the issue, balancing my electrolytes. While I couldn't control how my liver used them, I could make sure that I was always consuming a specific amount. The ACA required restaurants of a certain size to post nutritional information and increased requirements on packaged foods. Without that, it would have been incredibly challenging to navigate. The amount of magnesium, sodium, potassium, sugar, and water would change, and I learned how to understand each different pain and what it associated with. It took months to find that balance. Unfortunately, I was terminated at the end of 2013. While the termination was unlawful and discriminatory, fighting it wasn't an option. While I was legally disabled, disability would take time and would not be enough to cover the cost of the health insurance. While it did allow Medi-Cal slash Medicaid, my treatment wouldn't have been covered under it at that time. So I worked as much as I could enough to obtain insurance. Wait, you were legally disabled. Why didn't you have disability Medicare? When you become disabled, it can take between two and three years until you have access to disability Medicare. I guess they hope that you die before you need it. Because of all the laws and decisions I've read, I can't figure out what their rationale is. Without a job, I was frantically familiarizing myself with color co Covered California. Covered California is the California-specific version of healthcare.gov, the ACA marketplace. Are there, there are a lot of mixed feelings about its pricing. Where do you stand? First off, the marketplace prices are set by private insurance companies, and because of this marketplace, smaller local, locally-based hospital insurance hybrids have been growing. The prices are still primarily controlled by two elements, the top four insurers and the banks that are invested in these insurance companies. Sounds like you're into conspiracy theories. 
Technically, that's what this is. They're conspiring to control prices. We have no way to correct this market inequality besides government action. The ACA has allowed me access to insurance, and because my income was eligible for the credit, I was able to purchase an affordable plan and keep my doctor. It allowed me to postpone my death by a year as I zeroed out on my fourth treatment. The victory was short-lived as I hit my out-of-pocket maximum of $4,000 deductible and a week in the hospital after a run-in with C. diff at a diner. The treatment had failed, and the virus was back in the millions. Thankfully, I soon began a fifth treatment. The year ended, and the new insurance plans came up. The one I was previously on was shuffled around a little bit so that they could legally increase the price. The plan increased in price by about $40 per month, which was about a 13% price increase with few noticeable changes in benefits. While irritating and burdensome, it was still far better than the alternative. Each of these treatments combined cost me out of pocket only about $12,000, which may sound absurd for an effective income of $18,000 per year, but remember that without it, I couldn't even get treatment. And if I could, I would have been out over $300,000 on treatments alone. To date, my cumulative bill to insurance total is approaching $6 million. TIL, I'm not a cheap date. It was worth it, though. You, you're cured, right? No. The fifth treatment failed, and within a year, my liver went from an average meld of about 20 to 30. I was steadily dying, and it was visible. To hide the jaundice, I maintained a tan. However, by June, my, the jaundice made me look more orange than anything else. My treatment was postponed, and I was no longer allowed treatment due to my high melt score. So I waited by my phone. I had been on the transplant list for nearly three years by this point, and only received two calls before September of last year. Before I would begin my hospitalizations near the end of the year, my disability Medicare finally came in. While it is more expensive per month than my previous plan, I was able to have three weeks of hospital stays, a week of at-home nursing, and dozens of prescriptions taken care of for very manageable copays. Oh, and a liver transplant and subsequent medication. It sounds like the ACA was the bridge before Medicare for you. Was that always a plan? No. No one means to get sick. I did everything in my power to live and utilize the tools I had access to. I, I didn't want to get to the point where I needed Medicare. But I can say this comparatively. Having it is one of the most relieving insurance plans I've had. So you're alive today because of the ACA and, and Medicare. How do you feel about repeal and replace? I'm interested to see what the GOP replaces the ACA, also known as Obamacare, with. It'll probably be the ACA slash Obamacare or Ryan Care. Don't you mean Trump Care? No. <clears throat> no. Uh, Trump has nothing to do with helping anyone but himself. While I disagree with Paul Ryan on most things, he is the congressman who will craft a replacement. He's been at the head of the opposition since the, since the ACA came into being, and like the Sanders v. Cruz debate about a week ago, the GOP wants to keep things vague. They don't stand for anything until the day they vote. Unlike, well, unless they author or co-author legislation, and even then it's shaky. Their M.O., is like this because if you don't take a stance, citizens are less likely to be angry with you. The new right to try legislation that the GOP has been pushing will most likely fuse into an Obamacare replacement. We can change this, though. We can make sure we have a good health care system. Just call your local congressperson and and or senator, and tell them what you like or don't like about the ACA slash Obamacare. A legal document must be read through and through to understand its gravity. And I say gravity because it doesn't just affect its intended target. It affects everything around it. 
The ACA, also known as Obamacare, is one of the most powerful pieces of legislation I have seen in my lifetime. It saves lives, improved lives, expanded Medicaid to millions, and expanded potential millions of dollars in productivity while decreasing the reliance on medical bill-related bankruptcy. After all, a healthy workforce earns more, spends more, and lives longer. This is the sound of me dropping my mic. Drop.